Okay, I think uh, before we start, uh, I just to remind you that uh, we are going to have a final exam on the on six, right? Six. Uh, so um, the formal classes, I think uh, the last classes will be within this week. But if we need one more class next month, uh, next Tuesday, that will be also okay if you want to make sure that we have uh, enough review and practice. Okay, so uh, today I will start from the last time discussion just to finish off what we have and uh, just to make sure that uh, from the from the uh, beginning to the end for this kind of problems, you can uh, you can solve. Uh, uh, the, the, the problems, okay. So, uh, the problem is we are going to plot the shear diagram and moment diagram from the graph, uh, from the uh, picture above, uh, from the beam AC. So we first uh, find the free body diagram to let the result for A Y and C Y, okay, and then uh, we get the result for each of them using a moment, using statics, and then after that we take some segments from either you can take from the left or from the right, then you should be okay. But I think in the uh, in this case the distribution loads will be very, very important. So I believe they, taking it from the left side, like the segment here, will be very important. Because from here, we are going to have uh, a mic, let's say a smaller segment that can have the statics also. So what this uh, statics will be used for? So the purpose for this one is we get some equations that can relate to this distribution loading. Okay. But to give you more um, clear view, when you have this kind of triangular uh, shape like this, you will get a linear equation, and for the moment, you will get the quadratic equation. Okay. As we can see from what we have here, you will get the, uh, the calculation from the shape itself. You will get something quadratics and then you will get uh, for the um, shear and, and moment. Okay. okay, let me just get this crab, uh, and let me erase this for a while. Okay, let's start from taking these seg small segments and taking the, uh, for both of the statics. So let's take from the sigma f y equals zero. So from this part here, we take from uh, a y, and then we have the, the the yellow forces. These two, so minus x squared over six, and then minus the other one, three x minus x squared over three. So minus three x minus x squared over three, like that. And then um, what else do we have? the V, right, the V1, and minus V1x. This is equal to zero. So we can have an equation for V1 that is equal. So AY is, what is our AY? 5.75, so 5.75 kilonewton. And then, what else? Uh, minus minus x squared over six. Oh, I think we can we can simplify. So we can take this into 
x squared over 6 positive, right? So I think I will, I will just rewrite that as a positive. So positive x squared over 6 and then minus 3x. Or in a more uh, clear, let me write the quadratic first. And we have these quadratic equations. In which, as I can say before, if you want to know when it's equal to zero, then you are going to use some quadratic formula or you can input into your calculator finding the x, okay? finding the, uh, the factors. Now similarly, we can take the sigma moment. Let me write here, or maybe a bit. Let me write a little bit smaller. Precise. Okay. Okay, sigma moment, let's take sigma moment at this small a on the, on the right side. So we can just, uh, taking all a y multiplied by x, right? And then taking the counterclockwise as a positive. So we take uh, negative a y x. And then we have what else? Uh, x squared over 6. And then multiply with plus x squared over 6. Multiply with uh, 2 over 3. And then we have the 3x minus x squared over 3 multiply with x over 2 and then what else we have the moment get okay, the moment uh, plus m1x this is equal to 0 okay solve for this case so m1x let me write here uh, so x cube or x cube 9 oh sorry 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 this is supposed to be plus so this is having 3 over 2 x squared and then minus x cube over 6 so 9 and 6, we get 2 over 18 and 3 over 18. So we are going to have minus and then move to the right side. We get x cubed over 18. Okay. And then minus 3 over 2 x squared. And then plus the ay is 5.75x. This is kilonewton meter. Oh, I forgot this one is in kilonewton. For sure, uh, this type of questions, plot the graph, shear and moment, at least one question that 
for finals, this is uh, one type of question is to draw the shear and moment diagram. Okay. So I hope you get some clue from what we have here. And then uh, the more important thing is to prepare your A4 notes. Okay. And I hope what you prepare is what you are understand. Sometimes you wrote something that you also <laughs> don't, in, don't understand the notes. <laughs> but I hope you, you understand the notes. Okay. So how, I hope you can prepare uh, your notes very well. Okay. So after this, all calculations, all equation we get, then we can try to draw the diagram. Okay. Um, I think I will draw the the picture first. So this is A, C, and B. Okay, that will be for A, B. This is three kilonewton per meter. This is two kilonewton per meter. And this is three, three meter. This is three. Let me move this a little bit to the left. Okay. So we can try to draw first the oh. The AY, I forgot the AY, we have 5.75 kilonewton and CY, this is 1.75 kilonewton. Okay, so we try first is our V, okay, V. V is in kilonewton. Okay, let's say this is the axis, this is the X. In meter. So at first we get AY, the reaction force, which is in positive directions. So I think we can start from there. So start from here, 5.75 at the top. And then as you can see from the equation we have, we already have the quadratic equation at V. So you will get something that is crossing the x-axis, but it's not linear. It's not linear. So it's based on uh, these equations. So I think it's best to find the x. Okay? So you can equal in this equation to zero and find the x. I hope you can, if, it, if you're not familiar using the calculator, I hope you can find a way to try in your calculator, find the factors, uh, okay, and then you get x, and from what I have here, when you have v equals 0, the x will be, the x will be equal to around 2.1, 2.1 meter. So that is the one that it, that is crossing the axis. So let's say this is 3, so if 3 is there, then perhaps 2 is around here, okay. And then you can also check, because we already have the equation, so you can check when x is 3, you can also check when x is 3, what will be our equation, and you will find that our equation will equal to 1.75. So we get that here is something like that. It's not really linear. It's going to have a quadratic curve up until that point. And this is 3. This is 6. So this will be minus 1.75. And then as you can see from the picture also, that there is nothing in the B until the C, which we have 
another 1.75. So we are going to have a constant here and goes up and becomes zero. So we will have this shear diagram. Okay. If you want to make sure, like, what is the equation for this? The same way when you find these equations from the the segment, you can do from the right side. So you can slice and you can make this. And let's say you take some x also using the uh, right side. And you will find that the shear will be 1.75, and the moment will have a linear equations. But I don't think that will be really useful if you want to uh, shorten your time and then focus on the diagram. And then think if you're really familiar and you get a good intuition when you when you uh, draw the graphs and you know the relations through some calculus curve. I think you should just try directly. I mean, no need to like calculate all and prove all uh, equations okay? because the instruction is to, to, to draw the diagram okay? and just mention which point that is important. Okay, I think we can continue and let's continue this into our moment. So let's take that as our moment. So moment, it's kilo newton meter. And let's say this is going to be on the left side there. Okay, as, and as we can see, the relation between M and B, they are, they are having relations, right, for M and B. So we are actually integrating from B into M. Or we could say the slope of M is basically our B. So we see this is positive and then negative. So we are going to see something that goes up and then zero and then negative. So zero, zero is when this happened, when X is equal to this 2.1. Let me, maybe let me, let me, Right here, this is a 2.1. Okay. okay, so we can try to build up. Uh, now it's a cube, so I think let me take some line first to make sure that we can have a good proportion from the V. This is 3 and this is 6. Let me use different color. So 6 and this is 3 and this is 2.1. Okay, now based on what we have in X, okay, we can also try to find what will be for both of numbers for 2.1 and 3. And for 3, you will see that it goes back to the 5.25. Okay. So you will see here, this is going to be maybe, maybe here. So if you plug the 2.1, this will result 5.98. You can also check with your calculator. So 5.98. So something like like that. Okay. Or if you want, you can maybe cross check and try some value from three to six, or maybe from zero to two, to make sure that your graph correctly uh, fit with your curve. So you could just type in with some numbers between uh, the range, okay? And you will get that here. It's 
goes down and this will be equal to let me write here this is going up a little bit here so this is five to five this point and this goes down and you will see that when uh, this is should be linear sorry so it should be linear because they're constant so up until there and we have a linear but remember okay these equations will only for 0 to 3 okay from 3 to 6 it's different equations okay because we are going to see from this constant Because we find through here is only the segments. If you want to prove what's happened in the right side, then you can do, or maybe let me just show you. Let me just show you so you will have a more convincing process on how we do this. So on, on BC, which is 3x6. But we still need to take a y. Okay, let me let me just draw first. Okay. Uh, sorry, draw from the right. It's a y. But this is longer than. <laughs> so this will be. Let's say V2, and this will be M2. Okay, and then now we have this one here, is we call small b, okay. and we have from here until perhaps here, this is b. Okay. This is A, this is B, this is B, and then we define a new X that is going from A to small b. And we are going to take the this whole resultant directly through our equation here that is here we have 1.5 kilo newton. This is the one meter, and then we have another one that is six. It's on here. This is from our previous calculations, right? The resultant. So this is three. So this is three, and this is. 1.5 right so this is 1 1.5 1 this will be 0 0.5 okay okay that's all we need and then we take the statics okay we take the statics so this will be a y Minus 1.5 minus 6 minus V2 V2x equals 0. Or V2 is AY minus 1.5 minus 6, which is 1 point or negative 1.75 kilonewton, which we get the same thing from this particular uh, number. Okay, we get the same.
and then we get the same thing for the moment so let me make it smaller for the size But for me, the second part here, not too important, as long as you know how to draw the diagram through uh, calculus behavior. Okay. This is if you want to make sure to confirm, then you can do this. So we can start by taking the uh, negative AYX. And then taking the plus 1.5 multiply with x minus 1 and then plus 6 uh, x minus 1.5 and what else do we have? Then just plus m2 equals zero. So m2 will be ayx, which is 5.75. So this will be negative 5.75x. And then you can compute all the x and you get the linear equations. So 1.5, so this will be. 4.25, 4.25 and 6, it's around 1.75, 1 1 1 so negative 1.75x plus 1.5, 9, 10, right? 10.5. kilonewton meter you can check when x is equal 6 this will directly equal to 0 so that means that this is for this side okay. so either way you get equations from 0 to 3 and you get the equations from uh, 3 to 6. 3 to 6. Yeah, and then this is the moment diagram. Okay. Okay, any questions first from this part? Because after this, we move forward to the um, stress in the chapter 7 and finish. I hope you can finish by this week. As I mentioned, formally this week we are going to finish. So next Tuesday class will be optional. So if you want to have like practice class, then maybe that Tuesday will be our practice class. And then June 6 will be our final. So Friday no class. Okay, Friday, uh, not this Friday. The next week Friday. Okay, and then I will also uh, prepare the notes on the Moodle. Okay. Have I uploaded the notes yet for mechanics? Only four, right? How about this this one? This year moon? Oh, okay, okay. I will, I will check. If we already... Because this is uh, uh, basically you already finished, so I can have the notes ready for the Moodle. Okay.
Okay, we move now to the chapter seven, which is the stresses in beams. Uh, some books, perhaps they mention different uh, different chapter, but in our books, uh, this will be in chapter seven. Chapter seven. So we have write some notes on some parts that is I think this is pretty much a concept okay something that you need to remember is actually from wait 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 from here actually this is I think um, the one that I think significantly uh, important. So the, the flexural uh, stress okay, and basic, uh, the basic understanding is based on the Cook's law, the same. And then we simply just ignoring the normal stress on Y and Z axis. So we are going to see that the materials assumptions will be elastic, linear, and isotropic. Okay, this is the, I think the one that's important here. Okay, let me continue. Flexural rigidity, ah, here, the flexure formula. Okay, and then we can start some, uh, some example. Okay, so from this flexure formula, so what does it say is basically Later, we are going to see what we have in between the positive and negative, which we have the natural uh, axis or our natural surface. The natural surface will determine how or where the locations in which the beams will have uh, compression or tension. Okay? So I think I will give you an example of how to see this uh, problem in a more uh, practice way. So we have problem here, but let me change first the numbers into a unit that is the same with our textbook. This is I because the one that I use here a little bit different. So let me let me change first. This is five. This is 20 millimeter. Oh. This is 100 millimeter. This is 40 millimeter. This is 20. Okay, this is for this one, this one, this one, this one. Okay, I think the dimensions are uh, complete. So this is the question, determine location of neutral axis. Of the cross section. And then determine moment inertia with respect to neutral axis and then determine maximum tensile stress and maximum compressive stress. on the cross section. Okay. So that's the question. We have three. And this is basically step by step uh, on for most of the cases in uh, beams. So you have a cross section, you have the dimensions. First you find the neutral axis and then you find the inertia and then after that you find the tensile and compressive stress. 
So basically, this is a typical question, and the next next problems will have some sort of uh, additional notes, additional contents, and access, like an accessories. But the main idea is these three questions. Okay? These three questions it's all over the places okay? for this this whole chapter. This is the main questions usually. So if we take this shape, we have two rectangles. That is the main our main uh, part, right? So the flange and the web. So let me draw again here with the center of mass okay, taking place. Okay, that's for flange. That's for the web. Okay. And then let me take. So let's name this is this C1, this is C2, component one, component two. And for the for the uh, flange, this is the center of the mass. is also center of the mass. Okay, let me uh, name this C1 and C2. Okay, since the, the center is on the middle, then we can describe this using the dimensions on the given information. Then we know that this will be 20, right? And if we slice by two, this will be 10 and 10. Okay, so 10, 10, and 40. So this is 10 and also 10. So this is quite uh, long because of we are going to have some sort of observation on the geometric. So this is 40. Okay, suppose, suppose that our assumption or our targets, the total, the total center because we have center here for the first part, the second, second part is here, then perhaps the total center for the neutral axis will have around here. So let, let's just make that as our assumption first, and then we can, uh, we can calculate. So let's say this is the total center. Let's say this is C, okay? Okay, this is 20. And then what else? And then we need also to calculate this distance. So it's uh, 100 and then plus 10. So 1, 1. Okay. okay, what else do we need here? C2, the distance here. And then here, just to remind that this is 100. Okay, do I miss anything? I think we find most of it. So the neutral axis, we usually write as this symbols. So we are going to calculate based on the area. This is equal to one, A1 plus. Okay, so the total we could take for A1, A1 is the component one. <coughs> okay. 
A1 is this. 4, 8, it's 100. Multiply with 20, it's 1. Uh, oh, 100 multiplied by 20, 2000, right? 2000. 2000. And then, where is the this uh, the distance? Okay, the center. The distance is C1. So we get from our base here that this is the distance one one ten. Okay. So we take one ten millimeter, multiply with the A1. So let me write here. A1 is two thousand millimeter squared. So this is 2000. And then plus So what we what we want to find is this, right? The the the, the red one. This is let's say this is the this distance. And then N2. N2 is here. And the small one here, the green one. 50 and the area is based on 20 and 100. Okay. It's the same area, 2000, right? So 50 millimeter, 2000. So we get, if we multiply, so 22 and 100, so it will be 220 and 100, 320. Thousand millimeter. Oh, cube, cube. Sorry, sorry, cube. Okay, so this is four. Is the distance and the, the total area, and now the total area itself is two thousand and two thousand, right? So the distance will be we divide with the four thousand. Okay, so. Let me write here that A2 is also 2000. Then area total is 4000. So this is area total. So the distance divided by 4000 is 80. 80 millimeter. So I think our deductions are correct that if this is exactly uh, below 100 okay, and nearby 100 and we get this 80 minutes, okay? So that is our uh, neutral, neutral axis. Okay, that's the first one. So this is for A, so let me write here, A, B, C. So let me write B on below and C on the right side. Okay, now to find the inertia for the rectangle, inertia of rectangle, I think I, I have written the formula before with respect to neutral axis. So this will be one over twelve B H Q. Okay, and then we also have a moment inertia. I think we are going to have a break first and then continue. Okay, so uh, before I compute the inertia. So inertia for the uh, with respect to neutral axis, we have this, and this is inertia for uh, uh, if we have just a one shape only. But if we have uh, uh, some complicated shape, we would like to compute each of the inertia. Okay? So basically, what we are going to do is uh, we have some um, uh, relations. So the moment inertia for some complicated shape is the moment inertia of that shape, I see in the total, which is this, plus we add area, 
multiply the distance between the centroids. So what it means, and what it means, in a practical way, we are going to to find the distance first between the C2 to C and C1 to C. So we can define uh, part one and part two for this part. Okay. Let me let me just give you some idea here. So the inertia. So the total inertia will be first is I C1 plus A1 and then D C1 C and then squared and then plus I C2 plus A2 and then the distance between C2 and C. Okay, I C one is one over twelve, and B H B H cube, which is here. So B will be one hundred, and H will be twenty. So it's it's basically the base and height for uh, each part. So the base for one, look one here, one is here, so one is. 100 and then this will be the height okay. so 20 cube so we are going to write over there 100 since all is in millimeter I will just ignore the millimeter for now so this will be B H H is 20 cube plus a1 is uh, for uh, 2000 or let me write 100 if you want to write one by one, 20. This is A1, and then D, C1, C is this part. Okay. So if you would like to see what is that. So we have, this is 80, this is 100. So this will be 20, right? And this will be half of 20, 10. So 10 plus 20, so this will be 30. This C1, C is 30. So let me, I think this is, uh, I think, important to to be drawn here. So this is 30 millimeter. Okay. So that will be for our D, D, C1, C. So this will be 30, 30 squared. Okay, that's the first part. Okay, so part one. So this is the uh, component one. And the component two, same thing. We focus now on this part here. Now this is the base and this is the height. Okay. So plus 1 over 12. Now the base is 20 and the height is 100 cube. And then plus the area 2 will be 20 and 100. And then the D, C to C. Okay, this one, so we have, this is 80, this is 50, so this is also 30, right? So we could write, write down, this is 30 millimeter, so 30 squared. You can take out later and solve for that, but I will just share with you what is the total inertia. Is around 5,300 multiply with 1,000. So it's around uh, 5 million millimeter with power of 4. Still okay? And now the idea for the whole thing, the whole component, is the stress in the tensile or the compressor, which is number C. So why this is going to be uh, in process? So first step, usually in more problems, you will find the neutral axis first. And from the neutral axis, you can find the inertia. Okay? And after you find the inertia, you will use this inertia to find the stress. Okay? So let's find the stress on number C. So let me write here. Let me like that. So C 
So the flexor formula will be negative m y inertia. This is y should be okay. Okay, so if we want to make sure that we find the compressive, so we know that our neutral axis is 80. Okay. Our neutral axis is 80. And the maximum compression, this will occur at, so let me write here, max compression. at the top of beam. Okay, based on what we have here, we have a moment. So at the top of the beam, we find the maximum one, right? The maximum one. And what's the distance between the centroids to the maximum, the top? So this is 20. This is another 20, right? So this will be 40, okay? So this will be 40. So since that is 40, then we are going to take the 40 as our distance for y. Okay? So this y here. So the sigma max for compression. This is occurs at, we can write uh, as sigma x 40 millimeter so this will be equal to negative moment is 5 kilonewton so 5000 newton meter and then what else uh, oh we need to change meter to millimeter so we need to multiply with 1000 let me write So we need to multiply with 1,000. So we change that and then multiply with 40. And then divide by the inertia is 533,000. You will get that this will be equal to negative 37.5 megapascal. So negative because this is compressive. So we could also say this is 37.5 MPa compressive. And the same way we could write for the tension that is happening on the bottom, okay? And now here's the deal for uh, top and bottom. Since we don't really have any problem with signs in the compressive but for tensions remember that this is neutral axis so whatever happened on the top is positive whatever happened on the bottom is negative so you need to multiply with another negative for the tensions okay so this will so since we our formula from what we have done before we already defined that the formula has a negative so when you multiply with another negative it means that you will have a tension because it's become positive Okay, so let me write first that the maximum of tension is at the bottom. So we could say that at the bottom that this will be our distance, the, the 80, right? 80 millimeter. Or in our case here, we could write sigma max for tension is at at y equal negative 80 okay so we could write ne uh, negative 5000 newton meter we, we change to millimeter and then multiply with negative so then you can see that it will get a positive value. And then divide by the inertia. And then you will get that this will be equal to 75. 75 megapascal 
or we say this is 75 MPa tension and simply in in the beam case the positive negative will determine whether it is going to be compressive or tension okay another question that perhaps interesting is uh, maybe this one here this one here but let me change all the component So this will be two uh, two kilo newton. So this will be implementing the diagram the shear and combining with the beam. So this beam is having a T section, but if you look from the side, you will see that it has two colors, right? The white one and the darker one. So this is supposed to be like the T, the, the, the previous uh, picture. So let me just explain here. Two kilonewton, this is five kilonewton, this is one meter, this is one meter, this is one meter. So one, two, three, five kilonewton, Loading diagram, okay. So using the procedures that is um, from the previous one, sketch the moment diagram, that is basically what we have done, and then compute the maximum compressive flexural stress and maximum uh, tensile flexural stress. So the possible way, one possible way to draw this is, let's take this, that side, and just basically because we already have the shear diagram what we can do from this part is we are going to to uh, predict what it, what it will be so if we have linear then perhaps this will be quadratic okay. this is negative this is positive this is negative so you will see something going on over there and of course at the at between one and two, there will be some sort of uh, section that is crossed by. So, or if you want to take down the mathematical formula, it's M2 minus M1 is equal. Okay. Now taking the each uh, important distance so this is for one meter two meter and then three This will be so we will have something on this one here. So this was supposed to be like that. Okay. So this is one. This is two. This is three. From one to two, 
there will be a positive slope. Okay. So perhaps this will be take on that way. And then from two to three, it will be negative slope. So, and it will be linear because it has a constant before. Okay. And then the rest, you can find the, the distance here from the equation from you take you slice this and then you, you take the um, 0 to 1 and take this as x so you will get a 2x and you get an x squared right you will get you will get an x squared for that point but I think I think you can just draw like this and simply you find the maximum or uh, the value when when it's equal to one. This is going to be a minus minus uh, x squared when x equal to one is minus one, right? So we can take this minus one. And I think uh, no need to calculate other others, right? So you just need to to write the the moment diagram. Okay. 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 And then what else? We need to compute the stress and okay, the flexural stress, both uh, tension and compressive. Uh, and remember that this is a T section, so we have T sections that it has been, it hasn't given you any information about that. So let me draw and give you the dimension. It's the same dimension, I think, from the previous. Yeah, the same dimension. So the inertia, the five thousand three hundred thirty-three. We have, we, are, we are going to use that. So we have flange and web. So this will be inertia is five three 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 thousand millimeter four, and we have the centroid at the eighty, right? We have the eighty. And we have the forty for this one. Oh, and then we need to also have to take this point also. Okay, so the two. Okay. If you if you compute, this is actually two. Okay. You can try to compute by yourself. Okay, this uh, formula. But what I want to to give you here is uh, sometimes we can have this type of problem that you find the shear moment and then. It's actually our also uh, our our uh, beams, so uh, basically the same as the previous uh, problems that we are going to to use this forty and eighty as our distance for the flexural strength and stress, okay? uh, and then the moment that we are going to to use is this one. So this is the negative one and two. That will be the one that we are going to use. So the flexural formula is negative m y divided by inertia, right? Which means that we are going to apply for each distance. So one meter, and then two meter, and then three, or at least two. Okay, at least two. We just focus on the maximum minimum. So this one and this one. So one meter and two meter. Okay, because that is the one that we have. Uh, the maximum uh, compressive and tension, right? So take the one meter at 40. Then we are going to take this equal negative. The moment is already in negative, so negative one. It's kilonewton, so it's 1000 newton meter. And then we are going to uh, 
multiply with 1000 to make it millimeter and then multiply with 40 and then divide the inertia okay I will just use the the given calculations that is 7.5 megapascal okay and then you get another one still in one meter but we are going to take the negative 80 so we are going to to see for both cases tension and compression for uh, each uh, distance here for one meter and two meter because they are having the the maximum uh, bending moment right so for this one same negative 1000 and then multiply with negative 80 and divide by inertia so if this is going to be in one question this is one um, going to be a really long uh, tedious um, solutions so this will be equal to negative 15 MPA and then we take the at 2 meter and Y is 40 millimeter now we are going to take the 2 so 2 Kilo Newton meter, so or two thousand Newton meter, and then this is forty divided by five thousand. And this will be equal also with this negative 15 also so at this 2 meter this 2 equals okay and then at 2 meter but then at the uh, negative 80 this is 2000 And we get that this will be 30 megapascal and take the the, the maximum one uh, if you um, remove the negative or positive signs we get 30 and 15 okay and for the negative that will be the compression okay so that's that's the way to remember so if you get the negative that will be for compression so the stress maximum for compression will be negative 15 and stress maximum for tension will be 30 and what about the 7.5 7 it is just a normal tension but not the maximum one so what really happened and okay, what really happened between what we have here 7.5 15 15 30 so if we take into our beams So let's say this is our um, A, this is B, this is C, this is D, and all is having each one meter distance. So at one meter, we have, so at one meter, so this is the natural axis, so one meter, we have 7.5 and 15. So 7.5 will be a tension. So let me write here. So suppose that that, that is the, let me write more clear. 
for the neutral axis. So I said that's in the neutral axis. So at B, at one meter, this will be 7.5 megapascal tension. Okay? And at uh, compression here, this will be negative 15 compression. And then at two meters at C, we get another negative 15 so this is negative 15 or we say uh, or let me write without the, the negative so just write compression and tension so here is negative uh, or 15 megapascal compression and here is 30 megapascal tension so that's what would happen. So at one meter, we have 7.5 megapascal tension. And at the uh, bottom, we have 15 megapascal compression. So we have a, so it seems that we have a tension here, and this is compression. Because all the forces are different within each beam, right? Okay. It's different case from what we had before. In, in previous case, like in a regular way, we take the case, just a beam, without any force, and then we just we just take this like like this one. And simply, this is just saying that okay, you have a tension on the bottom and a compression on the top, right? But here, since we have our moment here that has different sign, so each will be having a different, uh, perhaps different tension and compression okay, according to this diagram. And then, uh, because we already know to find the neutral axis from the, from, the, uh, from the previous problem and this T section here. So we know already that this one and this one, the distance for uh, each uh, compression and tension, we know how to find this uh, distance. This distance is important to to get into our um, our equation to find the, the stress. Okay. So we, we find so so the first thing here. How do we decide which one uh, that we input is from the moment diagram. The one that has the most negative value and the one that has the positive value. Okay. This one is the one that we are going to to evaluate. So we are going to evaluate at this one meter and two meter, okay? And then we need to also combine with the distance from the neutral axis. So 40 meter, uh, 40 millimeter and 18 millimeter. So we get one meter, both for at 40 and at negative 18, we get we get some tension, uh, a compresses, compress, compression and tension, and at two meter. For both 40 and 80, also for tension and compression. Yeah, this could a little bit complex because we combine um, the diagram and then with the stress uh, in the beams. Right. And I found my books. Okay, back here. And of course, uh, for the beams, there will be several other example, so not only this P, perhaps there will be another like C, and then there will be some other variation as well. Okay, to get you into some uh, quick notes and just uh, additional information is, uh, we have this, okay, so this is, we call the design, design of beams. Force strength. So at least we have uh, we call the wide flange section, I beam sections, uh, and channel sections. 
But I tried my best to prepare a um, question for your exam, something that is uh, not really complicated to to be compute, which, for example, the area or cross sections will be very uh, easy to approach. Okay? Not really that complicated because I think this part here is not really rectangular, so I think not really the best way to compute in the in um, exam or in our practice. Okay, and we have this, S equal I over C. So S is going to be uh, elastic section modulus. So this will be property of the cross section dimension. And the value of S will be depends on the centroid, okay? Depends on the centroid. So I is the inertia. Inertia about the, the neutral axis. And C is the distance. to extreme fiber. We're going to see what is C here. So we have C1 and C2. This is simply to say that this is from the natural axis to the extreme uh, top or bottom. And simply we, we take uh, positive negative based on the moment. Okay, if we take positive moment, we have this compression tension. If we take reverse, we take tension compression. So basically, what we have here is we could take the sigma for the top is basically negative m, and then c one, okay, based on what we have in the picture, and divide by inertia or we could simply just write, if we have this S, we could write the M over S1 or negative M over S1. And for this, for the bottom one, since the bottom one will be negative, so we will get the positive result, which in turns that is the way we see the tension. This is just how we uh, uh, write with another another symbol or another formula. This is basically the same we have before. Okay. But what's important using S? Okay. S becomes important because you will, we will find that many beams will have certain design that already fit or already fixed, already fixed. So this S can be simply uh, like a property that we that we consider when we design something. So this is pretty much related to how we relate the beams to our allowable design, okay? which, which one that is going to be perfectly uh, um, uh, fit with the situation. Okay? So for example, we can, we can simply write down the, let me write here, can I write in the new page? I've prepared the picture on the new slide. But let me let me write first. Okay, let me write first here. So if we if we take this as our moment diagram, okay, then we could see that we could just take the maximum, the bending moment maximum, or the moment maximum is the maximum of the value of all m in 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 the in the diagram, right? And we can simply, from that perspective, we can write this S design. So this will be a lowable stress design equation. 
So by selecting as that greater than the as design, then we guarantee okay, or uh, the flexural stress will not exceed any sigma allowable anywhere in the beam. So I simply I, I give this S like uh, the way we designed in the previous previous sections. We have the allowable stress, right? But now in beams we have the S design. So S design will be important to let whether our flexural stress whether it will exceed our sigma allowable or not so this is uh, actually zero is a safety factor but we can also say the safety factor is here so sigma allowable based on safety factor or this is related to the sigma yield. Okay, I think for other uh, sections that is flexural stress in non-homogeneous beam and then for unsymmetric beam or unsymmetric bending, I don't think we have much time to explain all. So, so the final exam, I think is up until here, is up until the flexural stress, the flexural stress. And I will try to uh, compose some of the exercise by this week so that we can have some review on this Friday. For one hour reviewing, uh, maybe two questions for this part. And if we need, we may have another lecture next week. If not, then no lecture, that's okay. We are going to find out maybe this Friday whether we need more lecture or not but i think that's all for today but before i end is there any question any question from the previous part probably any questions no okay so your final exam it's, it will be torsion the shear moment diagram and then this beams and the flexural stress okay. so three three chapters. Okay. okay.